So my neighbors asked me some questions about the Bible, and I didn't feel like I knew how to answer it. Oh man, can you believe that? What a bummer. Church should really have something to deal with these kind of things. What do you mean? I'm glad you asked. Like some kind of ministry, you know, like where the church goes out and talks about the Bible and stuff. Like a friend telling Bible ministry. That way the church can do it and I don't have to do it. That's right. <laughs> Let's, Let's go, go tell, tell the pastor. pastor. Whoa! Who are you? I'm the church. Nito. No, not Nito. Did you not see my sarcastic air quotes? It says the church on your costume too. You don't see my sarcastic air quotes there too? I mean, what do you think church is? Some nameless, faceless building here to do all the things you care about, but you don't want to do yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you stay right there. I'll go talk with your friends. You don't have to. Guess we could help. No, 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 no. I got this. Well, you stay right there, and I'll be friends with your friends. We'll have barbecues, bonfires, and s'mores, and long walks at the park. Because I'm the church, and I'm friendly. You better get yourselves out there and do something. I'm not even real. All right, good morning, everybody. Great to see everyone here. My name is Brian Mosley. I serve as the lead pastor here at the Springs Church. It's my honor and joy to welcome all of you here and all of you joining by way, on, uh, by way of YouTube. I want to welcome you as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really feel like God has an important and a special message for us. Almost one of those kinds of messages, like it's a, it's a milestone. It's, like a, it's a, like a turning point for our church. So I've been praying that God would just open our minds, open our ears to really hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to our church today. So would you join me in a prayer before we get into the word? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this uh, message that you've given me today. I thank you that it's going to change lives, Lord, and, and not only our lives, but the lives of those we encounter. And so, Father, open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, Father. And teach us, by the Holy Spirit, your word today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. amen. Well, today I want to talk to you specifically about being bold and unleashing your faith, sharing your faith with other people that you come in contact with every single day. I want to start off with uh, some of what Jesus said. You know, Jesus said some things in a book called uh, Things Jesus Never Said, okay? Let me do a little parody, a little joke with you right now, okay? Um, this book is called, this is the, out of the book of American Christianity, and the chapter is Things Jesus Never Said, okay? Are you, are you listening with me? Okay, he told his followers to, to do their very best to create a safe and a cozy Christian country club all around the world, right? Inward focused, just worried about themselves, just concerned about themselves, just go to church and be a nice person. This is what Jesus supposedly said, right? Never, just, just show up, just sit there, just listen, never grow, never change, never stretch yourself, never take responsibility, never get honest, never mature in your faith, never commit, and certainly never do anything out of your comfort zone. <clears throat> Jesus told them plainly, pursue that American dream at all costs. Always cower in the corner. Always be quiet. Always have, live out your faith privately. Do your best to, say, to stay safe and comfortable and don't ever, don't ever take any bold kingdom 
actions. Because the pastors will do it all for you. Don't be concerned about sharing his word. Don't be concerned about sharing the gospel, sharing his love with other people. Because they are just not worth it. And eternity really doesn't matter to them. It can just be us four and no more. And let's close the door. Obviously, Jesus never said those things, right? But you love me, don't you? I love you too. Sometimes we live as though he did. Sometimes our mindsets and sometimes our actions are lived out in a way as if Jesus really did say those things. So what did Jesus really say? What did he say to his followers? We commonly call it the Great Commission. It's a bold commission. It's a a big plan. It's something that he commanded his disciples. And that includes each one of us. Let's look at it together. In, In one version in Mark chapter 16 verse 15. This is up on your screen. And go ahead and grab your Bible or take notes with me if you're following along. But he said this. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Notice he didn't say just come to church, be nice, and listen. Right? No, he gave us a mission. He gave his disciples a clear and bold and essentially important mission to be focused on as his church. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Over in Matthew chapter 28, there's another version of the same commission. And it says this, Jesus said to them, and he said, All authority in heaven and in earth has been given to me. Therefore, I want you to stay and be comfortable right where you're at. Okay. No, I didn't say that, did it? Therefore, go, G-O, go, take some action, make some movements, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, that word nations in the Greek is just, is, it comes from the word eth- ethnos. It just means all people groups. How many of you know that you don't have to go to Romania to reach a nation? There are people groups all around in Las Vegas. And there are people groups at the grocery store. There are people groups at your workplace. There are people groups at your school. There are people groups all around. And this command says, Go and make those disciples of all those people groups. And this is how you do it. You baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And you teach them, you teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And Jesus says, surely I am with you to the very ends of the age. I love this quote by Hudson Taylor. He said this concerning the Great Commission. He said, that Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It's a command to be obeyed. It's a command to be obeyed. And my prayer just leading up to this week is, God, would you give us your grace to be more earnestly fired up and passionate about fulfilling the great commission that you have given to your church. Because church, I don't want to be an inward focused church. I don't want us to just be us for and no more. We need to have a heart of outreach. We need to have a heart of reaching those people that we come in contact every single day. And my prayer is God. Would you burden us for the lost and the hurting of our community? God, would you make us the light? God, would you make us the salt in the earth? God, would you use us to bring light into this dark world? But why do we hesitate? 
we often hear, if you've been around church, you may have heard messages like this, and, we, and sometimes we're like, okay, well, I get it, but, but I'm kind of hesitant to do anything. I'm hesitant. Why are we hesitant? Well, let me give you a few thoughts uh, that, that may be apl- applicable to us. Number one, we hesitate because we're afraid. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of making a fool out of ourselves. We're afraid, we're afraid, we're afraid. These people are not going to receive us. They're not going to like us. They're not going to hear what we're sharing with them. We're often afraid. Another reason why we hesitate is we don't feel qualified. Right? We don't feel like we have all the education. We don't feel like we have all the answers. But the pastor went to school for this. But not me. I'm, not, I'm just not qualified to share and to speak the truth of God's word to other people. They're going to stump me. They're going to have questions and issues that I just don't know about. And we feel unqualified, so we never share. Another reason we may be hesitant is because we don't want to come across as pushy. We don't want to be those annoying Christians and those pussy always jamming the Bible down your throat, right? We don't want to come across as pushy. And so that fear paralyzes us and we become hesitant to share our faith with other people. And the last one, and I think this is probably the biggest one that Christians face, is that we're just complacent. We're just comfortable. We're cozy. We're good with just the way things are. We don't realize that there's a lot at stake, whether we share our faith or whether we stay silent. And so we become complacent, and it makes us hesitant to take some action and to share boldly. Everybody say boldly. Boldly the word of God with other people. I love what Pastor David Platt said uh, in his book called Radical. He said, this is up on the screen, he said this, Somewhere along the way, we have subtly and tragically taken the costly command of Christ to go, to baptize, to teach all nations, and we have mutated it into a comfortable call for Christians to come to be baptized, and to listen in one location. I want you to think about that. Because I want to remind you today that we are commissioned people. The church is a people on mission. And you don't have to have a degree in order to share your faith, right? You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have all the answers of all the questions and be this professor and be this, uh, uh, what's it called when you're defending your faith? <clears throat> apologist, thank you. You don't have to be a professional apologist or a college teacher. Like, what do you need? Church, what do you need in order to share your faith? Well, you need to know that Jesus has commissioned you to share your faith. He has said to you over and over again, go and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. We have to embrace that call as a church. And we have to say, yes, we will be a church That is committed to fulfilling the great commission in our city, in our nation, in our world. Nothing's going to stop us. We're excited and we are committed. We have made a resolution that this is the kind of people that we're going to be. Not only that, but we need to be a people who are praying daily. For the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know we can't accomplish anything with any effectiveness or anointing without a reliance upon the person and work of the Holy Spirit? It's the Holy Spirit that makes us bold. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us to be an effective witness for Christ. I want you to jot that down if you're taking notes with me. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be bold witnesses for Jesus. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says this. 
Jesus said, but you will receive what? Power. You'll receive God's power, his anointing, his boldness upon your life. You will receive power when who? The Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Is the power of the Holy Spirit just for goosebumps? Is the power of the Holy Spirit just to make us feel good during worship? Is the power of the Holy Spirit just to make us shout and clap a little bit? Or say, hallelujah, praise God, and all of that is great. But what is the purpose of the power? The purpose of the power is to make you a witness for Jesus Christ. To make you bold. To make you strong. Not to make you obnoxious. No. Not to make you pushy. Not to make you some annoying Christian. No. But it's not about that. Being bold is about being convinced. Man, I am convinced that Jesus Christ can change lives. Why? Because he changed mine. And he changed many of yours. And I know the truth of his word. And I know the power of his presence. I am 100% convinced. And when I understand my mission as a commissioned person. And I'm daily praying for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Watch out devil. Watch out darkness of the world. The church, the light bulb comes on and we realize, hey, we are the light of the world, church. We are the salt of the earth, church. We are God's solution to what's going on in this dark world. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be Jesus' witnesses. And boldness is that spirit-given conviction that we must speak about. What Jesus Christ has done in our lives. And my prayer has been, Holy Spirit, would you give us your power again afresh? Would you make us bold again afresh that we may be people who go out and fulfill the Great Commission? The early church, you look at them throughout the book of Acts, you see they prayed for boldness. How many of you have prayed for boldness in the last week or two, right? We usually pray for this, for that, but the Holy Spirit wants us to pray for boldness, to speak God's word with that power that he desires to use us. And he, sa he says this, look at Acts chapter 4, verse 29. This is the early church praying. And he said, now, Lord, consider their threats. You know, they were being persecuted. They were, they were having opposition against them. He said, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Lord, help us to be a church that won't cower in the corner. But help us to be a church that will speak your word with boldness. Whether we're introverts, whether we're extroverts, it doesn't matter. God, the Holy Spirit, wants to empower us to speak his truth with boldness. Again, in Acts chapter 4, verse 31, I want you to see this. It says this, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God. Come on, say it with me. Boldly. They spoke the word of God Boldly. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was all up in their business. They were empowered by that Spirit. They were anointed by that Spirit. They were on fire. They were passionate because of that fire of the Holy Spirit. And that fire made them bold as a lion. We see members of the early church speaking boldly. Over in Acts chapter 9. Verse 28, so Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 13, verse 46, 
Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first, since you rejected it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. Now we're going to turn to the Gentiles. Acts chapter 14, verse 3. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there speaking boldly for the Lord who confirmed the message of His grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. Acts chapter 19, verse 8 says, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 28 says he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Do you see a theme going on in the early church? As they're realizing they are commissioned people and as they're praying for that empowerment of the Holy Spirit, they are bold in their teaching, in their preaching, and they're going and they're making of disciples. I love what Paul says. He kind of wraps it up in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. He says, therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We have such a hope. Such an amazing Savior, such an amazing Redeemer and Lord and Master over all. We have such an amazing hope for our future. We have this salvation. Therefore, how, how could we not be very bold? Pastor James McDonald said this. This is up on your screen. He said, embrace afresh. The biblical method. Clear, concise, unwavering witness for Christ, even in the face of opposition. The bold way is the biblical way. Testify boldly and without fear, regardless of the response, and you will know God's favor upon your witness for Christ. Church. This is the point. This is what I want you to understand today. We are a commissioned people to go into all the world. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. And we are to be filled and empowered every day by the Holy Spirit to boldly reach and disciple people for Jesus Christ. Well, thank you for those three amens. That was a thunderous silence. (laughs) Thank you. I think if we grasp the truth of this, it will change our perspective. It will set us on fire in a brand new way. And it will, it will, it will, change the course of this city not just this church but if the church really understood what this was about and what church is all about and that we do have a mission and it's not about us for and no more And it's not about living our faith just in private. And it's not about just being a nice person. But it's about fulfilling his mission. In the power of the Holy Spirit, that would turn our community upside down. It would turn our churches upside down. It would turn our nation and our world completely upside down for the glory of God. If we as the church would grasp the reality and the truth of what I'm telling you right now. So I want to give you three practical ways, three practical ways, everyday ways that you can be bold in your faith and and unleash that faith in other people's 
lives and share that with other people. Number one is this. You can boldly use what you have. Now think about this. You can boldly use what you have. Consider this. In the, in the very first way we see this in the gospel is, is by an unlikely candidate named Levi. Sometimes he's called Matthew. If you don't know about much about him, he was a despised tax collector. And when Jesus changed Levi's life, he simply could not keep that love of Jesus to himself. I mean, think about this. Matthew just didn't know anything about how to share his faith. Like, he wasn't a preacher. He didn't go to Bible school or seminary. He had no religious training. He would have failed miserably, probably, at preaching a sermon or doing an object lesson or something like that. He just wasn't trained in that way. And Levi had never led a life group. Levi had never served in kids' ministry. He, was never, he never went through the growth track or served on the dream team. Like The only thing this guy really knew how to do was throw a party. This guy knew how to throw a party, and that's exactly what he did. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. But he said, Lay, let's put some burgers and dogs on the grill. Let's put the big game on the flat screen. Let's, uh, let's hire a band. Let's send out invitations to everybody I know. Obviously, I modernized the story a little bit, <clears throat> but you get the point. This is what it says in Luke chapter 5. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples. Jesus, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew simply called all of his buddies, and he invited them to a party to celebrate what Jesus had done in his life. In the same way, you and I can use what we have to reach those we love. Do you have a boat? There's not a lot of water around here, but you have to drive to it, right? But you can invite some people to go out on the lake. Get to know them and share your faith with them. Do Do you have season tickets? Share them. After you share them with the pastor, share them with somebody else, right? Be generous. Develop a relationship with somebody. And before long, you could influence their life in a very significant way. Can you cook? Invite some people over. Invite college students over for a free meal. I promise you they'll show up. You'll have a crowd for sure. Before long, you'll have people feeding on your home-cooked masterpiece. And you'll be sharing Jesus with those people in your house. Do you have extra time? You can use that extra time to invest in people, to serve in your church. And the more you serve, the bigger difference you can make in the lives of other people. God can use you. As you use what you have to reach people for him. Is this making any kind of sense today? Okay. The second way, the second uh, practical thing that you can do to be bold and unleash your faith is this. You can boldly invite someone to church. You can boldly invite someone to attend church with you. John told a powerful story in that fourth book of the New Testament, he said about a, about a woman who had experienced a lot of hurt, a lot of pain in her life, and when she met Jesus, he offered her this living water, 
a relationship with him that would change her life forever. And John tells, tells us in the fourth chapter in the 28th verse, he says this, Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? And they came out of that town, and they made their way toward him. What did this lady do? She didn't memorize a script. She didn't preach a sermon. She didn't lead anyone in a prayer. What did she do? She invited them to come and see this life-changing man. I want you to know today that one bold invitation can absolutely change the eternal direction of a person's life. In fact, that's what happened to me. When I was 17 years old, I wasn't in church. I didn't grow up in church in any kind of way. I was clueless about the Bible. But I had a friend in high school who would always love on me and invest in me. And he would say, Brian... Why don't you come to church with me? And I always made every excuse in the book not to attend with him. But then there was a season in my life where I was just down and out, destroyed. And at the lowest point I remember ever being at that time. And the tables turned and I went to him and I said, Hey, remember that invitation to church? Well, I'm ready to take you up on it now. And I began going to church with my friend just because of that simple invitation of a loving friend in my life. And I heard the gospel for the very first time. I heard the truth of John 3.16. I responded in my heart and, and it has transformed my life ever since then. I'm now on my way to heaven. I now have a purpose. I have an assignment from the Lord. And he's called me to do what I'm doing today. But where did it start? Boy, it started with that little invitation to church. Come on, somebody. Just that simple invitation to join you can change a person's life forever. Amen? Amen. You'll see people... In your class, hurting, lost, who could use an invitation to church. You'll see people at the gym, discouraged, down and out. You'll still see people when you're out to eat. You'll see people when you're at the grocery store. You'll see some people that you work with, just lost and needing some kind of direction. And that one bold invitation can change their life forever. Church, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. And God wants to use us to lead other people to Christ. How will he do it? He will do it when we boldly use what we have. He will do it when we boldly invite people to church. And number three, jot this down, he will do it As you boldly share your story. Share your story. Testify of his life-changing power. Testify of his goodness. Testify of his love that he has shown you in your life. One time when Jesus healed the blind man in in the gospels, tons of skeptics just criticized him, called Jesus a con. And a liar and a sinner. And then, this, the, and then the healed man replied back and he spoke up. And he said this in John chapter 9 verse 25. He said, whether Jesus is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know is that I was blind, but now I see. And what is this guy doing? He's telling his story. He's telling his story. And and John continues, and the skeptics fought back in verse 26 and 27. Then they ask him, what did Jesus do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. 
Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be his disciples too? I love this. Do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be his disciples too? What did he do? He told his story. He gave his testimony boldly, even in the face of opposition, even in the face of being persecuted and made fun of. But he told this story boldly, that Jesus had touched his life, that Jesus had transformed his heart. Church, we are commissioned people. You are a minister with a specific purpose at an opportune time to make an eternal difference. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. What can you do? You can boldly use what you have. What else can you do? You can boldly invite people to a life-giving church. My goodness, it doesn't have to be this one. There's lots of great churches in town. But invite them to a life-giving, Bible-preaching church filled with the Holy Spirit and watch God work. Watch God work. What else can you do? You can boldly share your own story. I'm going to invite Star to uh, play now. We're going to just close in prayer. And my prayer for us today is, Lord, whatever it takes... Whatever it takes, increase our boldness to declare the gospel to everyone we can. To every opportunity we have, let us walk through it boldly to share Jesus Christ with people. If we will catch this, church, if you will catch this, and not depend on the pastors to do everything, But if you will catch it, church, this is the only way that the church of Jesus Christ can sustain outreach. Listen to me. We can organize. We can plan things. We can do things corporately in the community and outreach and stuff. But if you want sustainable outreach, if you want evangelism that goes on every single day, This word, this mission needs to burn brightly in your hearts. And as you go through your days and you go to your workplaces and schools and homes and families and the Lord takes you to places in our community or in our nation and you're able to have that personal evangelism in the power of the Holy Spirit in people's lives, that will change this world. It will turn things upside down. So my prayer today is, Lord, Holy Spirit, make us bold. Increase our boldness that we can share the gospel with every single person we can. Would you stand with me, please? I want you to take a moment and just think about those in your lives. I want you to think about maybe three or four people in your life that you know today who are lost and hurting, who are away, living their life away from Christ. I want you to think about those people. Who is it that God has put on your heart today? Who does he want you to reach out to today? have anybody come into your mind I want you to just invite you to start praying about it I want to invite you to start praying daily Lord who would you like me to be a minister to today who needs your gospel today that I can be your vessel every day say Holy Spirit empower me to be bold and to unleash my faith share my faith in a powerful anointed way with 
people who need it. So, Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Lord, for the movement of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for teaching us the truths that you have for your church today. And I pray today, Father, that you would just set each and every person on fire. That you would allow the passion for evangelism and outreach and obeying your great commission, Lord. Would you let that fire just burn in our hearts? Lord, if there be anything in our lives that is hindering that fire from burning, I pray, Lord, that you help us to remove it. That we may forsake all sin. We may repent and we may turn wholeheartedly back to you, Lord. God, there's a lot at stake. And I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you empower your church to make a big difference in this city and in this nation and in our world. Father, don't let us grow cold. Don't let us hear your word and then walk out and disobey it. Let's just wait on the Holy Spirit for a moment. Let's begin to pray, church. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in and through our church. Lord, we thank you for your power, for your grace, for your love. Lord, I pray that you would give us ideas about how we individually can reach out to the lost and hurting people around us. Lord, would you lead us by your Holy Spirit to speak a word to somebody, to speak encouragement or invitation to somebody who needs it. Lord, we have the answer, and the answer is you. Jesus, you are the answer. Lord, let us be a people who fellowship with you every single day, not just for an hour and a half on Sunday. Let us be a people who are serious about fulfilling your great commission, God, and not just playing church or plastic Jesus games. God, deepen our commitment. Deepen our passion for you. Help us to reject being just comfortable and cozy. Let us burn with zeal and passion for your kingdom, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just feel like we should do something a little differently today, if that's okay. If this is a message that has touched your heart, go ahead and keep playing, Star. Thank you. But if this is a message that has really touched your heart, I'm not going to invite the ministry team to come up and pray with people today. But if you'd like to come up and ask God to anoint you, ask God to use you as his instrument. Ask God to anoint you in a fresh way to be his hands and feet, to be the salt and the light, to be his mouthpiece in other people's lives. I just want you to come. If this is your message, you needed to hear this today, I just want you to come and we're going to pray together. We're talking about boldness. Sometimes it takes a bold step forward just to come up and say, Lord, here I am. You can use me. Lord, here I am. You can use me however you want to, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say. God, here I am, and you can use me.
Just go ahead and ask him to anoint you. Go ahead and ask him to use you. Lord, whatever you want me to do, here I am. Use me. If you can use anybody, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord. Take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anybody, Lord, you can use me. Holy Spirit, would you anoint your church today? Holy Spirit, would you ignite the fire for evangelism and outreach in your church today? God, we want to be bold. We pray for boldness to speak to people. Lord, we pray for boldness to invite people. We pray for boldness to share our stories. Lord, we pray for boldness to use what we have to reach other people for you. Lord, consume our hearts today. Make it real to us today, God, that we are commissioned people. We are people on mission. We were made on purpose for a purpose. And unite us today to be a great commission church, to move boldly into the future and what you have for us, God. In Jesus' name.